Hello and welcome to another edition of Mailbag. What is Mailbag? Well, Mailbag is a feature of the channel where you guys leave lots of comments on the channel and I attempt to answer those comments or if I can't answer those comments, I throw it out to you guys who have more knowledge on some of this stuff than I do. So, let's get into the first mailbag of this session. Remember, like, comment, subscribe to the channel. Go over to Instagram and follow me there. Go over to Facebook, follow me there. That's where the normal notices are. And consider becoming a Patreon. Next comment or question comes from D2V Music in response to emulators for the SY85 D series ROM cards are like hen's teeth. Uh, mailbag I did in April 2023. D2V writes I switched out my SY85 floppy drive for an emulator a couple of years ago. I bought the now uh, Nobanto N Drive Extreme, and the installation was in fact very easy. It came with a ZIF connector for that flat ribbon cable and worked first time. Yes, they are expensive, at around two hundred dollars plus import fees um, to the U to the UK, which was about forty pounds. But the model I brought is specifically designed for the SY eighty five, and pretty much guaranteed to work. Now, Nobanto makes these drives for a wide variety of instruments worth checking out if you want to avoid the headache of buying a cheaper product and finding it doesn't work. Now I've been banging on for years about if you're gonna buy an emulator for your uh, instrument, make sure you get one with an OLED, OLED, OLED display. Um, but thank you for feeding back your experience of installing the Aura USD drive in the Yamaha SY85 and also for backing up my recommendation um, that spending more than $40 out on the cheap drives and many people uh, that many people are currently selling on the portals. Do not do it, it is not worth your sanity. Um, believe me, I've got friends of mine who have bought the cheap drives and have been banging their head against the wall because of the whole admin piece that it puts onto them. Anyway, in my view, if you want the greater user experience, buy one, buy the more expensive ones with the OLED display, and you will thank me for taking that advice later. Next comment or question comes from Gary Robinson. And he writes in response to, why don't you save yourself 24 minutes, a mailbag I did in April 2023. <laughs> this was, why don't you save yourself 20 minutes and don't listen to this guy rant on. Do you know what? And before I actually read the question out, you know, watching a video on YouTube is a choice, right? That's the bottom line, it is a choice. And, you know, if you don't like the content, you don't watch the video. You don't like the subject matter, you don't watch the video. If you don't like the presenter because he drives you nuts like me, you don't watch the video. It is a series of personal choice. So, you know, I did find that rather amusing. Anyway, Gary writes, um, I've also noticed a new trend in video titles that intend to shock people in order to increase the chance of a click through for the user. For example, my last video ever, or I won't be here for a while. And you want to understand what the hell the videographer, presenter, whoever it happens to be, actually means by that. And then you get into the video and it's a load of tosh. Um, there was one video done by, um, uh, well, I say a friend because I don't know Woody personally, but Woody did a video, I'm selling all my synths. Um, and he did sell a lot of his synths, actually, to be fair to Woody. Um, but the actual video title, as he said, it actually, all of a sudden, he got thousands of subscribers to the channel because it was the title got picked up somewhere. But that's the reality of how things actually work. Um, but it is human nature to react to those shock titles. Is this good marketing or is it clickbait? 
I've been accused of doing clickbait in the past and people who follow the channel, um, when I actually said on one of the rants or one of the mailbags that you know I was being accused of clickbait, they all wrote to me and said, you can't really be accused of being clickbait because you're actually talking about fact. And fact is not clickbait. Um, which I thought was rather interesting and rather I was rather thankful for those comments. Now, the name of the YouTube game is to get as many people to click on the video and get them to watch the first 30 seconds, as this appears to be the metric that YouTube give a damn about. The rest of the content can be utter rubbish, and I've actually watched videos in the past where it was on a subject matter I was interested in, and you got about, I don't know, two minutes into the video, and then the presenter effectively just repeated themselves, and they may have repeated themselves three times. And the reason they've done that is to make the eight minute mark which is the eight minute mark for being able to set where the adverts are in videos. Now, personally, I never, you know, I will do two mailbag sessions or two mailbags in the video typically um, to kind of get about eight minutes of video, but I don't do it because I want to set the, uh, the, ad, the ad, ad piece. I do it because I think that's the right kind of length of video for this sort of subject matter. Uh, after eight minutes, you lot have all, all had enough of me and say, right, that's it, I'm off, see you later. But eight minutes is probably about right. Um, but I do wonder how some of these channels have the level of subscribers that they have producing the type of content they produce. And a lot of the content that some of these channels produce is utter rubbish. But we teen seem to be in a culture of watching utter rubbish. Um, I'm, I know somebody and they will just sit watching videos on YouTube that are utter rubbish. They, there's no educational content in them whatsoever. They are just people doing stuff that to me just drives me around the bend. It's like, why are you watching this? Well, you know, it's, it's the video that followed the video. Okay, whatever. Um, now I try to create content as opposed to clickbait. Some of you may disagree with that, um, but you know I have been, as I said right at the beginning of this response, being accused of um, creating clickbait in the past. Some people have a very funny de definition of what clickbait is, and you know how things work on YouTube. Um, but if you're factual, you can't be clickbait. That's the way I look at it. Thank you.